Good morning, everybody. I have my Red Bull up here because I need it because I don't drink beer. Dang, that's good. On uh, today's episode of I Don't Know What I'm Doing, I'm just the only guy in the garage by myself. Make sure to subscribe. I think we're actually going to pull off the dash today, get behind there and see what all our electrical pinouts are, just to confirm them all, because we got the bulkhead connectors for the firewall. And these things should just pop in here like, boop. This is for like anything that's in the engine bay that was in here. We've got three plugs. <clears throat> these two are engine harness related stuff. And then this one I think is like power for the starter and whatnot. And this is probably a cooling fan. That way if you have to pull the engine out, it's as fast as like, leaving the harness on the engine and then just popping these plugs off and then the whole harness comes out with the car. And then I have to sort out these wires as well, which will probably be another day, like the headlight stuff. I'd like to tie this all up and make it look a little bit better. And like I said, if you're not subscribed, you're gonna to want to be subscribed because next video we have a, a nice surprise coming up. Bigger than this one. Now this thing's gonna come in handy. This came off Amazon. It's a metric helicoil kit. It includes everything that you need to do, I believe, M5, M6, M8, 10, and 12. And it comes with a ton of inserts here for all like the standard sizes. Um, like I said, this one, the bolt actually got pulled out of the block and it cracked a little tiny bit here. But the back portion of it is still good. So we're going to try and use the back parts of the threads. But it did pull out of the block when we cracked it. So we're just going to try and uh, put a helicoil in it here and see if that fixes our problem. So this one is still good down here, but I'd love to use this one as well because there's no other one, like this one isn't used. And then this one is uh, the next one that's used. So you can see that there's a bit of a distance between here and here. So it'd be nice to have two over here. And we're gonna try our best to clean that one up. Big drill bit. They give you the right drill bit, the right tap size and the thing that screwed in. So. On Amazon, this was the perfect price. I believe this was like 50 bucks on Amazon. Something like that, 50 or $60 Canadian. To have one of these just sitting around the garage in time of need, especially like if you don't wanna to run to the parts store and grab a $30 little kit that comes with two things, get one of these, man. It might've been straight. Yes. It doesn't come with a handle for the tap though. And you know, like, make sure to take a sip every now and then too. Straight down this and hopefully we can get that centered up. Shit! Got her. I'm gonna put some red Loctite on it. Just a dab. Just a dab on the outside here. This should just red straight into this thing. Technically. Literally technically. Now we have some threads back in there. Granted, they're not all the way through. There's only about, I don't know, like five complete threads on this piece, five or six maybe, but it'll have to do for now. Um, unless I can figure out a better solution for this eventually. I mean, I'm definitely hoping on that this helps support that engine where it broke a little bit more, because look how thick this is compared to a factory one. This helps it support more than this one. So it's way thicker right here too, on the edges. So I'm hoping that when we bolt this in, this is like a block support. I managed to find some relays here, a bit of rat's nest wiring back here that I might want to try and fix up, depending on our time frame. But then you can also see the intercooler pipe coming back behind the dash there. So we definitely don't have a heater box in this car. And then the other one's down there somewhere as well. But kind of a neat setup, I guess. Um, some booger welds a little bit. Uh, the steering wheel I also notice is not straight. I'm sitting straight. That's where the steering wheel position is. It's off to the left a little bit. It would be like straight right here. So maybe we can get underneath there, unbolt that and see if we can twist it sideways a little bit more. Um, but I did notice we have this Holly piece here. And this actually lets you data log through the dash, which is pretty neat as well. Has a bunch of in and outs there on the back. So we definitely got a little bit of wiring work to do. I don't know if there's a solid state relay in this for the bump box as well, which I'm gonna have to wire up as well because bumping in under full power is the cat's ass. I did it again. Loser! It's hard to get the camera in here because it's too big. 
I never have that problem. You see the one with the heat sink right there at the bottom of the frame right now? The one with the little fins on it? That's a solid state relay, so I'm assuming that one's hooked up to the trans brake right now. And uh, yeah, I'm just doing some digging, trying to figure out what all is wired in this car. It looks like the shifter was connected to the reverse lights and all that stuff as well. So, I mean, it's got lots done to it that I don't have to do. So, the previous owner of this car, I know, ran a mechanical fuel pump. So they didn't have a big electric fuel pump in the back like I'm going to use, like this Magna Fuel 750, to go from the back to the front. But I think the previous owner before him must have had a mechanical or an electric fuel pump because it looks as if this bracket right here um, is going to fit our pump. So if this is the outlet side, <clears throat> looks as if that's just gonna go up there. We'll bolt it in place and that should be that. That should be as easy as that. And then we just have to run some wires to it. I think this was a priming fuel pump right here before actually. I think that was what they used to uh, prime their mechanical fuel pump. I bought this at Prentice Auto for nine bucks and it's been so convenient. It's just like a little assorted pack of like M5, M6, M8, M10 bolts. I should have bought a couple more, but that's what I'm gonna use to bolt this thing down. It's just, I have an assortment of bolts down. Perfect. Next time I go, I'm buying a ton of these. Also, I forgot this was here. Yeah, I did it. I'm the best. The pump is in here. Um, this nice little bracket was convenient. We just need to run our little uh, dash 12 adapter on this, then 12 to 12 right here, just like a straight little line. And then it's gonna go eight out up to the front and then dual eights to the rail. One thing I did encounter here is I had to take this line off because that's our uh, water drain. So instead of running a straight right here, I'll probably just run like a, uh, a 90. That's probably three quarter MPT to 90 JIC. Um, that's just a drain so we can drain our water cooler between every pass. I believe that's hooked up to a switch that's right above it. So, Which is really convenient because all you have to do is put a bucket underneath the car. And then when you're up here underneath the back uh, between passes refilling your ice box, you want to get all the old shitty water out, which is all warm. Um, all you have to do is flip this switch right here. And then that opens the valve underneath and lets all the water out of your ice box drain into whatever you're draining it into. Now a little bit off track here. Sometimes I'll occasionally take on some side work for the boys. This one uh, just needs this bigger resonator put in to replace this one. It's a little bit longer. It looks like it probably has a bit more resonating on the inside of it. So you just gotta cut this pipe off square, get that to fit up center, and then uh, weld it back together. Which shouldn't be too hard in theory, but everything in theory is pretty hard. Like I said, I don't mind free welding practice, and it's one thing that I wanna get really good at is welding. So I don't mind taking on some extra work. It'll give me some extra little tasks that I need to do, but as long as it doesn't interfere with me building my car. Um, this should take like an hour's work. We're gonna get it all set up in the bandsaw here. My next big investment should probably be a bandsaw, one with like coolant cooling in it and something I can cut bigger than four inch pipe because I'm having difficulty sometimes like arranging the pipe a certain way and then the little handle thing comes down and hits it. So, bandsaw will probably be the next thing to upgrade. So one thing I do notice, and I don't know how to rectify it, but the blade pulls. You can see that the blade is like an eighth of an inch off on the bottom right now. So it actually gets sucked into the pipe at an angle. And then when I pull it up to the top, it's flush at the top. So it's cutting down and pulling itself on an angle. So my pipes are never straight, which is why I want a thicker, stronger blade in this thing. We're going all fine and good on our welts here. And, oh boy. Then we started to run out of argon and I didn't really notice. And then I messed it up a little bit. So I'm probably gonna go over that, clean it up maybe. That's a hundred dollar mistake. When you go on vacation and leave your argon bottle open and it slowly, slowly sleeps out because these never seal right, ever. So I got them both refilled. Cost me $202. Damn, argon ain't cheap. So this is our weld on one side here. Um, this looks like it's just been pulse fuse weld probably in China, but ours definitely has filler rod in it. And then this one is the one I messed up on the other side when I ran out of argon, so I re-went over it. But if we flip it over, 
then we got some pretty good consistency on this side and then some pretty good consistency on this side as well. You know, just a little extra behind the scenes of what I do like when I'm not on camera and I have a little extra side project here. So I usually don't film these, I'm just like, I try and get it done because I usually take a couple bucks for doing it, as I should because Argon costs a lot of money, and my time and my skills, which means if I started a fab shop, I'd probably do pretty good around here, maybe. I gotta get better, I think. It's one of those things where the more you do it, the better you get, but I can't do it all the time because I'm doing other things as well. So if I wanted to get good at welding, I'd have to dedicate myself to welding. She sounds mad. Why do I sound mad? Because you're losing a fall, guys. I'm not. I'm actually going to qualify here. Why do I sound mad? I'm, I'm watching in the same place. <gasps> oh, no! No! You made me lose! I didn't make you lose. You lost. <laughs> If you want to talk with Virginia live, she's always oh. on Twitch. Alien oh. Trash Kitty. I didn't even notice you there. Why you do this to me? I didn't do anything to you. You did it to yourself. You distracted me. <laughs> with my wiener. Rude. <laughs> Look at me, that fresh hat. That sick NASA shirt that matches the blue and the red. Anyways, mid video here. I need to give the boys a shout out. All the ones that are commenting down in the bottom and all the ones giving thumbs up to comments. I really appreciate you guys means a lot, it helps me in the YouTube algorithms a little bit. So, just for being awesome, here is the most liked comment from the last video. Pretty good comment, I guess. Today is Wednesday. I have one more night shift left, so I get off Thursday morning, and then Friday morning I'm gonna go down to Edmonton, get my transmission from James Hatfield. He sent me a photo, it was all done. It did wreck the oil pump gear. He had a really technical term for it. This pump gear should have a maximum of about four to five thousandths of clearance. This pump's fucked. And I'm also gonna go get my intake manifold from Andy Bliss. And uh, with the transmission and the intake manifold, we can actually get the engine bolted up solid in the car, fab up our back plates there, fab up our radiator, and then we just have to wait for our turbo to come in and then we can fab that up. We can get our wiring plugs done on the firewall and it should be ready to fire. This car doesn't take a lot in, I mean, it needs fuel lines as well. And then it needs something else and it needs something else. And it's gonna need a lot of things, but a huge step is gonna be get this thing solid mounted that way we can start fabbing up the things that we need to fab up on it. Speaking of NASA. Yes. And since this car is technically your alien spaceship since you're an alien. Mm -hmm, that's me. We've decided to get a new plate for the car. Mm -hmm. They've probably already seen it if they follow me on Instagram. Oh. Yes, perhaps. If you follow her on Instagram, Alien Trash Kitty. That's me. You would see this plate already. When it goes perfect with the car because your little catchphrase is, Get in, loser, we going probing. <laughs> Get in, loser, we going probing. It almost says Robin. Did you just cut her up this one? It does say Robin. You robbing them cradles because I'm younger than you. What do you mean? I'm only 29. Oh, I'm only 29. <laughs> so yeah, that's going to replace the back. And then I guess you could probably put like a sticker here that says. No, the sticker is going to be, it's going to be up here. And it's going to say, get in loser, we're going. And then that's going to say probing. Oh, you could almost put it right here too. Get in loser, we're going. And then probing. Okay, that works too. <laughs> I ordered a new turbo and you also got new turbos. Yeah. So you got mirrored twin turbos. I'm not telling them which ones because unless they follow your stream, they don't know. Okay. And I got a big turbo and I didn't tell them which one because they don't need to know until it's in and I can compare it to my wiener <laughs> size. They'd be like, wow, it's a big turbo. Whoa. Or that's just a small wiener, one of the two. Oh, okay. Yes. What? I was going to say we should do a podcast together, but we'll end up doing a live stream together, which will be just as good anyways. It'll be kind of like a podcast, but live, which is actually what a podcast is. So we're, we'll be like podcasting. Podcasts aren't always live though. This is also, also true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bam, I got a haircut. So now I look a little bit better and not homeless. But like I said, we're kind of at a standstill until we get the rest of our parts in. If you noticed, I got like a little bit fluff in the middle here. I got up to 196 pounds right now. I'm at like 192 but usually I float around like 180. So the whole like COVID thing shut down the gyms for a while there. And if you guys remember me from before, I used to be into CrossFit. So we had a flood not too long ago, which actually flooded out our CrossFit gym. So even though the, the gyms are open now because this whole COVID situation, 
the gym that I go to is still closed and opening up shortly. So I started running, but it's hurting my knees and my ankles because I'm not very good at running. But yeah, just so if you guys want to get in on some like back end life knowledge, I did gain a bit of weight and you guys noticed it in the videos for sure. And I'm not really ashamed of it, kind of shit happens, I always fluctuate up and down. But this is like the heaviest I've gotten since probably high school. High school it was actually like 210, I dropped down like 160 because I was a fat kid before. Yeah, just a little life update there. I'm gonna start like backing off of my calories and drop the weight again and I don't know, it's a fun journey every time. I also noticed that we're starting to hoard turbos again. We have our 80 millimeter over there and we have our 78, 75 over there and I have no intentions of using either of those turbos. The only way that I use that 80 millimeter turbo right now is that if Tokyo wants it instead of his twins, but I don't think he wants to get rid of his twin turbos. But yeah, like I said, I need the transmission and the engine in place so I can mount the radiator and the water pump. And uh, once those things are in place, I can also get a drive shaft length. I can start building the mid plate and then I can get a location for the turbo. Our new turbo is actually still an S400 frame, uh, but it's got the race cover on it and it's got a bigger backside, bigger wheels on both sides and ball bearings in the middle. But I should be able to get a general location with that turbo. The new one's actually on the way along with Virginia's two turbos is like you heard earlier. I have one downfall to the new turbo is that it's a five inch outlet on it. So it's the Marmon five inch uh, like V-band style thing on the back, but I have to go four inch piping because my bandsaw doesn't cut more than four and a half inch piping. So that's not very unfortunate, but I don't think we should choke that turbo out with a four inch down pipe that just comes out the side here. Sorry, I'm, I'm totally rambling here, but I just love uh, chatting with you guys as you can see from my two and a half hour live stream that I did the other day which me and Virginia have plans to do another one uh, coming up here probably on the weekend. But uh, I want to kind of wrap this up because I was working the last three nights. I couldn't give a chance to give you guys a video. I'd love, love, love to upload more to you guys. Give you guys something like almost every second day. Unfortunately, the way my shift schedule works, I cannot produce videos on days that I work. So I kind of like uh, get the most amount of content I can in six days and then kind of break it up through my work week and then upload it then. The only downfall is if I don't have parts on hand, I can't really attack the build like I want to. So that's why I'm going down to Edmonton. I'm gonna make the five hour trip down, pick up my parts, make the five hour trip back up just so I have something that I can start building on on the weekend here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna finish editing this video. I'm gonna go down with the Holly harnesses, pinouts, the Holly harness pinouts for the Holly HP. We're gonna get our wiring harnesses sorted out and I'm gonna start just trying to match up diagrams from the pinout I have on this side to the pinout on the Holly to the pinout on my LS harness and then uh, see kind of like mesh them all together, come out with a pinout of exactly in the game plan of what I have to do. All the additional wires I have to run because I'd like to run that like with the harnesses so it's not like an extra little harness that's going by itself. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Also when I'm down there, I also noticed that Princess Auto sells chromoly tubing in the right like diameters, uh, but in like 10 foot sticks. So I think I'm gonna pick up a couple just to have on hand so we can start doing more fab with tubing and stuff around here, just to get the swing of it. We'll put some in the bender, we'll use some notchers, we'll get some like little welds on the sides. It'll be great, it'll be another learning experience and then maybe we'll build a tube front for this next year if we're like overweight. The way it sits right now, I'm trying to build, I'm following X275 West Coast rules which allows me to be 30, 50 with me in the car. So 30, 50 pounds with me in the car um, with an 88 millimeter turbo, but it has to be like the GT 47 frame. So that's what I'm building the rules around of. I'm not gonna be competitive because you need like 1500, 1800 horsepower even to get into like the mid fours where the fast, fast guys are. And I don't just don't see that possible on our engine setup. Maybe one day we'll get like a nice 427, we'll be able to make all the boost and then uh, go mid fours maybe, but it's not in the cards right now. But we're still building to those rules just in case. I wanna go race with those guys, have fun. I'll be a duck, I'll be someone's by run. But then I would be fast at streetcar shootout events. So I'm gonna keep my radiator, I'm gonna keep an electric fuel pump. Um, I'm gonna keep turn signals and lighting and all the extra things that I need to make it still like a street car. It still has power windows in the thing. So that's my plan ultimately for this car is we're gonna build it to X275 rules. 
and we're gonna maintain it so it can do streetcar shootout class. Thank you guys for sticking around through my ramble there. Peace easy, get that V, and make sure you subscribe to Dan at DD Speed Shop. When he hits 57,000 subscribers, he's giving away a car for free to anybody who's subscribed to the channel. DD Speed Shop, it's a 57 Chevy. I want it actually, if I had it, I would turbo it. Sorry, Dan. Bye.